Artificial intelligence. Is it a bit of a slippery slope to be on when it comes to election campaigning? Sam, I'm going to throw to you here. Talk us through why on earth we are talking about AI. Yeah, so this all kicked off earlier in the week when the National Party shared one of their uh, deliberately low-quality memes, I think, um, saying that New Zealanders were sick of two things, the Fast and the Furious movies and uh, Chris Hipkins and Grant Robertson's reckless spending. The main issue that people noticed was that these the, the photo of the Fast and Furious cast was in fact not a photo, and it was not the Fast and the Furious cast. It was some very strange-looking lookalikes. And then that people raised the, the the question, you know, is is this actually a photo or is this an AI generated image? And yes, it, it was. And actually, the National Party has been using AI to to generate a lot of its imagery for for recent uh, ad, ads that have gone up online on Facebook and social media. So this is not shocking. We're seeing it happen a lot more overseas, and it, it kind of makes sense. You know, why would you pay for? Uh, a stock photo or run the risk of having someone in a stock photo that is not a fan of you as the this government had back in, what was it, the 2018 budget, I think, where the model on the front cover of the budget had left for Australia because they uh, could no longer afford to live in New Zealand. So if you make it someone digital, then that, that fixes a lot of issues. But there are a lot of ethical questions that come up around this. Um, you know, I think in, in the United States, we saw a Republican ad that was very, uh, that created a dystopian video based on a future where, you know, the US had reinstated the draft, I think had gone to war with Taiwan, and it showed the sort of country in, in ruins and Joe Biden sitting at his desk sort of grimacing, but none of it was real. So you kind of say, do we need to have some sort of restrictions or rules in place around this? And, you know, to be clear, what we've seen from the NAT so far has not been at that level, but clearly there is the potential for things to be misused if there isn't sufficient regulation. And another example that springs to mind was Amnesty International used some imagery, um, AI-generated imagery of uh, protests in Colombia and shared it with a, a report. And now that they had disclosed in the report, I think, that it was AI photos, but once you strip that from its context and it gets shared around the world and people think it's real, then that's that's really problematic, right? If, if you can't distinguish between what is real and what is not real, uh, that brings a number of problems. So I think it's something that you know, I'm sure is on the minds of officials here, AI more generally in regulation, but... Uh, we probably need to think about it in the context of, of political campaigning. What are your views, Tim? Do you think it's something we need to sort of have some uh, form of regulation around or is it a bit a bit uh, too much ado about nothing? Oh, no, it's very, very uh, risky and there's dangers in this. Uh, just on that, that video from the states that you mentioned, Sam, of the dystopian future and Biden and the draft and so on, interestingly, even the Republican National Committee put a, a, a tag on that which said an AI-generated look into the country's possible future if Joe Biden is re-elected. So even the RNC was willing to sort of acknowledge, and that's where I think we could get some kind of uh, clarity and agreement if parties are willing to front up, even in the, the asterisks you know, attached to their material, uh, what they're using and how. Uh, the actual overview of algorithms being used in political campaigns is old. They've been targeting, they've been using, you know, information about voter types and voter preferences and so on through uh, algorithms and, and powerful computers. This is now, though, generative AI allows you to do things like the founder of fake news, Donald Trump, uh, just last month after his CNN um, town hall meeting, issued an ad on his social media, Truth Social in which he told uh, people in the voice of Anderson Cooper, the CNN um, host, uh, expressing views on that town hall that weren't Anderson's views. But then Mr. Fake News was not one to let his viewers and listeners know that that was fake news.